Hello everyone. In this video, I would like to go over the details how to calculate the total impedance for this particular circuit. So in this circuit, given R equal to certain value, and also the capacitor and the inductor, and also giving you the frequency as well. Okay, so let's take a look at this image on this side. I have three resistors. I have a capacitor and I have an inductor. I connect them on this breadboard in the ways so that I can generate this circuit like this. So this circuit, AC, RLC, with components of the resistor, capacitor, inductor, and you notice that they are connecting in both series and parallel. The very first step I recommend everyone to do is to uh, analyze the circuit and draw an uh, impedance diagram. I call this an impedance diagram because from this impedance diagram, you can apply the Kirchhoff's law to identify uh, the components that are in series and the components that are actually parallel to each other. We also have to apply the concept of the impedance as complex number in both rectangular and polar form in terms of resistor, in terms of capacitor, in terms of inductor, how they uh, present themselves on the phasor diagram so that we can calculate the total impedance. All right, okay. So first of all, I would like everyone to take a look at this note to this note on this circuit. So we are going to break this into little components, okay, and identify the impedance in this case. So I would like to identify this R1 as one of my uh, components, okay, that will make it a Z1. Okay, so the next one is examined from this note to this note of the circuit. And I also want to draw an impedance here, the impedance box. I will identify this one as Z2. In this Z2, I can see that I have a resistor connect with a capacitor in series with each other. Okay, so don't forget that we need them in series so that we can write them in terms of impedance. Uh, in complex number, in rectangular, and in polar form. So the next one is to examine this node to this node. And again, I can find the impedance Z3 by adding this R3 with my uh, inductive reactance from this inductor L1. Okay, so from the analysis, I can draw the simplified impedance diagram like this. So if you take a look at the uh, simplified impedance diagram, you can see that Z2, Z3s are parallel to each other. So how do we identify that they actually parallel to each other? So we can base on uh, Kirchhoff's current law, right? So the current going through from the source, going through this Z1, okay? So it's still the same as the source. So the current from the source is equal to this part of the circuit. So it is in series. But when it goes through this node, it's split into two. So when the current split into two, you know that the components connected through this will be in parallel to each other. So when they are in parallel, how do you calculate the uh, sum of these two impedance? Is using the product over the sum. So right here, I put the product over the sum, which is Z2 times Z3 divided by Z2 plus Z3. So from here, I can draw another simplified diagram for everyone to visualize the next step. So here's my uh, AC source. And I draw a circle, the Z1 as such. Okay. And 
I already have this calculate as uh, Z2 parallel to Z3. Then I connect back to the source. Now you see that Z1 is now in series with the sum of Z2 and Z3 connected as parallel to each other. So therefore, you need to add the values of Z1 to the sum of these two. But the sum of these two is connected in parallel, so we have to use the product over the sum. That's why you see the operation right here is actually A+. plus. Okay, so analyze this circuit translated into a mathematical language. You can see right here, if you want to perform this operation to calculate the total impedance, all you have to do is just applying the concept of operations of complex number. All right. So let's go to our solutions. So the first step we have to do is we need to write the complex number in both rectangular form and polar form. So for Z1, you see that in Z1, I only have the resistor R1, right? So only R1 present. In this case, so I will have 220 plus 0J ohm, and I leave it at that. Why do I write it as a full uh, a complex number in rectangular form? Because later I will use algebra, and in using algebra, I will have to identify the 0J in this case. So given the capacitor equals to 1.00 microfarad, I can calculate the capacitive reactance using this formula, 1 divided by 2 times pi times the frequency times the capacitance and key all of this number into your calculator involving the engineering notation with the kilo and also micro, uh, we end up with this number, 159.1549 ohms. And don't forget, you see that I am using uh, the calculator and I round it to four decimal places because at the end, we have to round to three significant digits, and we need to be as precise as possible. OK, so now you see Z2 will be equal to R2 subtract J of Xc, because Xc will take the negative part of J. So 270 as the value for my R2, I subtract that with the 159.1549J. Immediately, I convert this into polar form. So I convert it into polar form. Why do I convert it into polar form? Because I have to perform Z2 multiplying with Z3. And uh, as you recall, if you multiply two complex numbers, it's a lot easier if you convert them into polar form. Okay. For Z1, the operation with Z1 is only addition. Therefore, you see, you notice with Z1, I don't need to convert the Z1 into polar form at all because I just have to uh, use the rectangular to add after. Okay, so the next part of this circuit which we analyze will be this part, Z3. Okay, so Z3 consists of a resistor and an inductor so we are going to use the values of the frequency and the capacitance to calculate the XL. So in here, I put XL equal to 2 times pi times the frequency times the inductor um, uh, calculated in uh, millihenry. So key all of this in your calculator. The value should be 731.9911 ohms. OK, again, Z3, R3 is adding with JXL because the XL would take the positive part of J on the phasor diagram, as we did in previous uh, lesson. 
So right here you can see that you add that 220 with 731.9911J. All right. Immediately, I convert this into polar form because I know that I have to multiply Z2 with Z3. Therefore, I need this uh, two number in polar forms. So according to this operation, you get Z1 plus Z2 times Z3 divided by Z2 plus Z3. So I present all the number as uh, in calculations like this. So you see you multiply these two complex numbers in polar form. It means that you are going to multiply the two moduli. So when I multiply these two values, I end up with this number. And to, um, for the argument, I need to add these two arguments. So if you take this value, adding this value, so I will put here as add. Here I multiply. Okay. Okay, I add the two values. I should have 42.7540 in this case. So now, as the sum of Z2 plus Z3, you see that I just use my um, rectangular form to, uh, to perform the operation because it's a lot easier. So if I collect the like term in this case. For the real part, I just add the two. So 270 at, at the 220, I should end up with 490. And I collect the like term by uh, performing the operation for the coefficient in front of the j. I end up with positive 572.8362j. Okay. So after this, you see that I have to divide this part into this complex number in polar form. So again, I immediately convert this values into polars. Okay, convert it to polar, I end up with this number. And again, how do I get 200, how do I get, I'm sorry, 317.79.07? Because I take this modulus divided by that modulus. And I take 72.7540, I subtract 49.4566, I end up with the answer as negative 6.7026. So I just want to make a note here. Okay, I take 42.7540, I subtract, okay, uh, 49. Point four five six six. This number will be negative six point seven zero two six. Okay. So at this point, now I convert this one into rectangular forms because now I'm performing the operation of additions, the two complex number now. So. Using these whole values with the four decimal places, I convert into rectangular form. And from this rectangular form, I collect the like term. So you can see that the 535.6187 is the result of adding 222 with this number. Okay, And from 0j, adding with negative 37, 0.0912J, I end up with negative 37.0912J. Again, using all the four decimal places, convert it into polar form and leave that as four decimal places as well. And then in conclusion, transform all of this or round all of this number into the number with three significant digits. Okay. So when I round this to three significant digits, I end up with 536. And the imaginary part will be negative 37.1j. And again, 
the polar form will turn into 537 as three significant digits and the argument will be negative 3.96 degrees. So now we achieve our um, purpose of calculating the total impedance for the circuits connected in both series and parallel um, uh, in term of rectangular and polar form. All right, okay. So I think it's uh, in fact a very uh, deep process. You can see how important complex number is. And without the complex number, I don't think we are able to calculate the total impedance in this particular circuit. All right, thank you.